What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to create the bot. We are going to create the bot in two parts. This is going to be the first one. And if you remember, in the previous part, we were sending the data to the AI. Now, our task is going to be to receive that data. So yeah, how do we do this? First of all, as always, let me show you the GitHub. As you can see here, this is the, well, these are the files that we are going to implement, something very simple, but yeah, if you want this bot, you just come to my profile in GitHub, repositories, AI Mac D R S I M A bot, and here you have it. We are actually going to create this, and yeah, this is where the bot is. So how do we start? What is the first thing that we have to do? If you remember, in the Visual Studio, we have several things. We have the data, the file to generate the data, but that's it. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to open a folder and we are going to call it bot. So here is where the bot is going to be. So now that we have this, what is the first file that we have to create? The first one is the main file, the file that is going to be calling everything. So what does this uh, file need? First of all, we are going to later have a file called bot, which is going to contain the class of the bot. So we are going to, to import that class bot, and we are going to later use it to, to yeah, basically uh, put into work the bot. Also, we are going to need the MetaTrader 5 library that, by the way, let's put it here as MT5, by the way, if you do not have it installed, you just put here pip install and you put metatrader5. If I'm not wrong, this is okay. Yeah, you just put this and that's it. Perfect. So now that we have these two things, we are going to initialize first MT5. Let's put here initialize. And later we are going to create the bot. So we are going to put here AI bot which is going to be equal to the result of calling the constructor of this class that we later will create it like we will create it later and the arguments that this constructor receive are first the lot edge then the time frame it is a 15 minute time frame and then the market in which this is going to work in this case is going to work in the euro usd euro dollar Perfect. Then we just have to call some methods that we will later create, which are start and finally wait. So the execution that the execution doesn't uh, finish. Okay. Now that we have this, what do we have to do? We have to actually implement this bot class, and it's actually something very simple. Indeed, I'm going to tell you again to come to the GitHub because here. I have a lot of comments telling you what is everything doing. So I recommend you that because it's more clear. Perfect. So now we are going to create that file. Remember, the file was going to be called pod bot. And here inside this file, we are going to create a class. So let's put here class bot and let's create that constructor. So in order to create a constructor here in Python, we just put the init and we receive self, then the lot edge, then the time period, and then the market. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to start creating some attributes to, to this class. The first one is threads because this bot is going to contain some threads and uh, yeah, we need to store them. So later we can close them uh, correctly. Then we need to store, well, to create a dictionary, which is going to contain some uh, data. And that's why it's called data. First of all, um, a key called data, which is going to contain everything related to what we receive from MT5. Then we need information regarding the MACD. This is going to be later for the orders. So this is at the beginning going to be known. And also we need information regarding the signal which also at the beginning is going to be none. Perfect. We have that initialized and we need to initial, well, to create another thing, which is an event that will allow us to stop the threads. So we can call this 
peel to kill and we can use the threading library threading and we should yeah it is importing there and we should create here an event threading event that's it perfect so now we are also going to need a dictionary in order to store the trading data so we are going to store the trading data and what is this data it's basically this so for example we can take this lotage and basically the lotage is going to be the lotage not equal so we put this perfect then the time period is going to be the time period time period that's it and finally the market is going to be market Perfect. So we have now initialized this data. Okay, now that we have this constructor, we need to do some things. First of all, we need to create functions such as the ones we were using here, start and wait. So let's call that function. Let's, well, let's create that method. So we are going to create here the start method and we receive first the self and we don't receive anything else. Self is always in python whenever you create a class and you create a method it has to receive itself if you come from java it will be something similar from to this so yeah we have here the self and this function is going to call another method which is going to be a thread data so this is going to initialize the thread data and we are going to create it right now also is going to initialize the thread orders AI, but this one, we are going to leave it like this because we are not going to implement it in this video. So let's put this thing. We have to put here thread data and now self because it doesn't receive anything else. So what is this function going to do? It's going to create a thread. And how do we create a thread? We are going to call it T we are going to use the threading library and we are going to use the thread. Okay, so now we have a lot of arguments to send, but we just need to. First, the target, which refers to a function that you want to execute, that you want the thread to execute. And then you also have to send the arguments that that function receives. Since we are not going to do it right now, we are going to leave it like this. Okay, well, now we have this thread. And as I told you before, we have a list to store the threads so later we can delete them. Well, kill them. So we are going to self threads and we are going to append the T, which is the thread. And after appending this thread, we are going to start it. So you, we use the T object and we use the method start. So we can put a cool print so we can say, hey, info, the thread data is working, something like this, whatever, you can put whatever you want. Perfect, now we have this method, but we also need some things, which is, well, we also need another method, which is the wait method, so let's create that. Actually, what this is going to do is that it's going to wait until we press enter or something else so that we stop the bot. So we are going to call this wait and we are just going to say, okay, I want you to print and say info press enter to stop. So we are going to make this main thread uh, wait until we have an enter and you just put here input you just you just wait for an input once you have an input this function stops and we come here to another method that is going to be kill threads because we have to kill them correctly so we are going to use this method and finally we are going to shut down the connection with mt5 shut down and as you can see here this is telling me that hey what is mt5 we have to import it. So we are going to uh, import MetaTrader5 as MT5. Okay, fine. So now we need to create this kill function. Well, this kill thread function. Let's call it kill threads. That's it. Perfect. And 
once that we have this, we are going to kill the threats. How do we uh, kill the threats? First of all, remember that we have here this event that will allow us to stop the threats. So first of all, before killing them, we need to stop them. So in order to stop them, we are going to put here self peel to kill set, set the event. And now for every thread that is a stop thread in self threads, this is why we have, well, we saved these, uh, the threads in the list because now we can close them correctly. We are going to call here the thread join so we don't have zombies or something like that. Perfect. So now that we have this, we are ready to start with the uh, data module. So what do we have to do in that data module? We are going to create a file called data.py. And here in this file, we are basically going to create a server that is going to receive information. So we are going to import the socket thing, the socket library, because we are going to use sockets and we are going to create a port. Remember this port must be the exact same that you put in the, in the previous video, in the MQL5 sending data. And we will check that later. So we also need an address and this is going to be local host. And finally, we are going to start doing some things before creating the function that is going to be called here. We are going to create a function to basically create a server. So this is going to be socket any. Perfect. And how do you create a, a server? First of all, we are going to create here a socket and it's going to be called socket server socket. So we use socket.socket, socket, socket dot AF init, socket dot socket stream. This is that we are going to use IP version 4 and this is that we are going to use a TCP uh, protocol. Perfect. So now that we have this, we have to bind the socket to a connection, well, to an address and a port. So how do we do that? As I said, we need to bind. So, okay, I've imported something, yeah. So it is as simple as saying server socket bind. And here, what important thing that I always have uh, mistakes, here you receive a tuple. So here first the address and then the port. Remember this, that inside here you have this tuple, this. Perfect, so now that we have this, we can start listening. So how do we listen server socket? listen and now we have to say how many how many people do we want in the queue like since this is a small project you can put whatever number you want but put a decent number for example 10 because if you put just one and you send two messages too fast maybe one message is in the queue and the other is ignored so if you put 10 until you don't have 10 you are not going to ignore anything so yeah, we have that, that's perfect. And now we need to start accepting connections. So we are going to use the server socket again and we are going to call the function accept. So we accept connections and this returns two things. First of all, the connection object that is going to be really useful and the address that has connected. So here we can put another print with info telling us, let's put here info, that someone has connected. So here, I think we, I can do this. Let me see, yeah, F and the address. And let's put here this, ADVR has connected. That's right. Okay, and finally, we are going to need this connection and we are going to need this socket later. So we are going to return that. Return, first of all, the connection and finally the server socket not server, server socket. That's right. Now we truly have to create this function, the function that is going to be called here. So how do we do this? We are going to put dev thread data. So this is going to be the function used by that. And we are going to receive the stop event, which is the pill to kill. And also we are going to receive the dictionary, this dictionary, the data dictionary, so that we can modify these values. So here we put data because this the when you create here a dictionary, this is like shared between all the threads. So if we modify this uh, dictionary in this thread, 
the order thread is going to see that uh, modification. That's right. So now that we have here this, what we are going to do is that we are going to create a server. How? By calling our function socket any. And this function is, uh, well, uh, returns something, which is connection and server socket. That's right. Perfect. So the next thing that we have to do is that we are going to put an infinite loop. So we want this to be executing all the time until the event has come. So we are going to say, okay, while the stop event is not set, while not stop event is set, perfect, let's do something. So we are going to receive here a message and we are going to say connection rec v receive and here we have to say the buffer how much how much do we want to receive we want to receive as maximum as uh, 1024 bytes so with this is enough because we are not going to receive super big messages so this is more than enough and here we are going to decode this so we have this in a decent string okay now that we have this we are also going to check something if and connection connection yeah that's right is in the message we have to stop so we are going to put here break go out from the loop because if you remember the previous video in that mql5 code we were sending data and at one point if we stop that bot we are going to send we were sending this message so that's why we are checking if we have received that perfect that's fine so now what we are going to do is that we are going to receive a message and we are going to split that message. But before that, let's start trying some things. We are going to print the message. We are going to open MetaTrader 5 and let's put this to work. Okay, so we have this opened. The market is today open, I think. Yeah, it should be open. And what we are going to do is that we are going to come here and we have this folder AI bot and here we have the AI client. So if you double click here, this window will show up and we have to set the port, the direction and the number of data to send. So we are going to send for now, this doesn't really matter. Let's put here uh, 20, well, let's put here, yes, 10. And let's say play accept. Now it's not going to work because uh, you need to you need to put the server first. So now it's going to say, hey, bro, I'm not going to work. So how do we put the server first? What we are going to do is that we are going to execute this for the first time. But before that, I forgot. Now I have to say, hey, execute this function. So we are going to import from data. Well, let's import data. <laughs> let's import the data file. And here we are going to put data and we are going to call a thread data function and which are the arguments that we needed to send remember that those arguments were the first one the stop event so fails self peel to kill and the second one the data self data that's right so i think there will be some issues regarding the name because that uh, yeah let's call it something else let's put it with a capital letter data so that there are no issues in this way data yeah so we put here this and yeah that's fine so now we should be able to execute this so if we put well let's go to the folder cd bot if we put python and we execute the main function okay okay it is working so now if we come back to mt5 let's remove this and here you have the, yeah, you can see that there was an error, the diary, the log. So we are going to call this again, AI client, this, yeah, connection established, this is in Spanish, so the connection was established. And the thing is that this was only sending information on every candle and we are in a 15 minute chart and we cannot be waiting all that just for a test. So what we are going to do is that we are going to open the ID and here, we are not going to wait, even not for a, even a candle. It was um, on every on every cross, so this may take a lot of time. 
what we are going to do is that we are always going to send data. So here we put this to true. We change the, the condition and we say that always to true. And yes, yeah, so let's play. Yeah, let's put compile. Let's press compile. Let's, let's remove the bot. And I can see that I think that we were already sending information, but yeah, you can see that this is empty. We are also going to stop the bot. Remember that you just have to press enter, nothing else. So we put this and now we are going to press AI client. That's it. Accept. Okay. And we are sending information on every tick. So you can see that now we are receiving things and that's pretty cool. You can see that this is changing on every tick. We are receiving something. But yeah, now it's time to test some things. Perfect. We stop it. We stop both things. But as you can see, we are receiving a very long string and we don't want that. We don't want a very long string. We want values. We want data. So how do we transform this very long string into floats, for example? So what we are going to do is that first, this message is going to be splitted. So we put here message splitted and this is going to be message split and we are going to split everything by a comma so we split everything by a comma and now we may have some issues so we are going to put here and try catch in this case is try accept and okay in the try we are going to try to do the following message splitted is going to be equal to okay we are going to iterate through the list because this function returns a list of every element and we're going to say okay for every element in the message splitted list splitted list we are going to do a class and we are going to do float the element so now in the list we are going to have floats and let's try to check if that is correct so print message splitted by the way what we should see now is that we have um a list a list of values because this is not a list this is just a string so we execute this and now we put the ai client okay perfect and we are sending data and we are not receiving anything i don't know what is happening i don't know what is happening guys okay guys i found the mistake so since we have changed this function now there is not a cross so it is not writing any of this stuff. So what we can do is that we can remove this. So it always puts at the end this zero. Obviously, when you put the bot to really work, you remove these things like you put it in the normal way. Now it's just to test if we are receiving the things correctly. So, okay, we press compile. Let's come here. Let's stop this because this is going crazy. Let's put this. Let's go back to MT5 and let's remove the expert advisor and let's put this here. Okay, connection establecida, connection established. And now, okay, perfect. You can see that here, let's stop it. Here, you have the string and down here, you have actually the list of values. That is what we want. So that is perfect. Fine, <laughs> this took me a while. So what we have to do now is that let's remove these prints. And now what we are actually going to do is that remember that here in the bot, the data dictionary contains a MACD and signal. So we should also put those uh, values. But now the thing is that it is tricky because you have to know where the MACD and where the signal are. So for example, here, this was sending, I don't know, like 10 values. So since it was sending 10 values per uh, in indicator, you have to count. So for example, the Emma uh, is, well, R, mm, yeah, like, I don't know, 10 values. <laughs> the RSI from the 20th and the MACD from the 30th and the signal data from the 40th. But the bot in the way we trained it, it was uh, with 20, 20 values per indicator. So it would be 20, 40 and 60. So we have to do that. So this is, well, this is starts from zero. This is starts from 20. This is starts from 40, which is important. And this starts from 60. That's right. Okay, so let's do that. 
the data, basically all the data, is going to have all the messages splitted, all everything. But the data, MACD, is going to have something else, which is the message splitted, but only this portion, from the 40th value to the 59th value. And the signal is going to be similar, but instead of from the 40, from the 60 value and to the 79 value. Perfect. Finally, we are going to close the connection. So when we go out from the loop, we connection close, we close the connection and we close the socket. So we are going to do here server socket close. That's right. Okay, now we are ready. So let's try one final time. And here, what we are going to do indeed is that we are going to print the dictionary. The dictionary. So let's see if we are saving everything in the right way. Python main, we come here, we can close indeed this thing. So now we, let's remove also this expert advisor. Let's put it again. Uh -huh -huh. And okay, let's check. So if we stop now, because we don't need anything, we have the dictionary and first we have the data that contains everything and then we have the MACD and the signal. But why do we have this in a wrong way? Because we don't have as many values as we have put here. So let's do it again. Let's put Python main. And now the thing that you have to do is that, look, what I'm saying is that here I, I put 10 values and we were we needed 20 per indicator. So we are going to put here 20, and now you can see that the thing changed. So we have the data that contains loads and loads of information, all these. Then we have the MACD, which is only the data referred to the MACD, and then we have the signal, which is only the data referred to the signal. So yeah, guys, this was a little bit messy, but it worked at the end. So we just have one thing left which is creating the AI uh, orders um, module. So the AI is the one who decides, hey, should I open a position? Should I not open that? So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, give it a like, share, subscribe, and see you in the next one.